Okay, let me bring Alexander in. Uh, one of the things I, I'm sure he's going to talk about is, is you being a co-creator and his definition of what co-creator is and how you co-create to get the things that you want in your, your life and in your world. And I, I, I've asked him to do a little bit of presentation on, uh, uh, what's the word? <laughs> uh, channeling. So, you got it wrong that time. <laughs> okay. So let me bring Alexander in and we'll let him play a little. <clears throat> Greetings. I am, we are, you are, all Alexander. Now, the reason we say that is because we are really all one. You're no different than each other, except you create somewhat differently. Your idea of, of reality is, is unique to you. So what I wish to say to you has a lot to do with this that you call channeling. Uh, it's not necessarily what we call it, but if that works for you, then that's a good description. Uh, Channeling simply means that you're tuning in to some energy, some information, or some entity on the spirit side that's uh, unseen or unaware of on this, this side for the most part. Uh, what we do, you can do. And if you take nothing else away today from this, and let me hope that you are able to tune in to spirits, spirit guides, teachers, angelic beings on the other side. And the reason I would like that is simply because each of you are unique and the things that you ask for, the information that you would like, is your truth. What is our truth is not necessarily your truth, not that we're trying to even suggest that you should be the same as we are. It is much better to tune in and, and to get your own information, your own truth. It has to do with your own reality, your own world. And that is where you will eventually evolve to. Where you are touching your guides and your teachers. And any information you want is already there. It is a strange thing on this spirit side. If you can think the question the answer is already there for you. So you see, the biggest problem you have is conjuring up your questions, asking. And that is why it's uniquely suited to each one of you to have your own guides, your own teachers, and have your own information. It doesn't have to agree with anyone else. Your reality doesn't agree with anyone else, we have to tell you. We realize that you think that I'm this person and that person, and we're all the same but we've been playing with this a lot of years, a lot of lifetimes. We have to tell you, no two of you think alike. A few of you look alike, but you don't think alike. <laughs> so the idea of channeling, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you are standing up in front of a, a microphone in front of people speaking. It can be a private affair. You can have a discussion they don't have to talk through you or speak through you. They can simply talk to you, have a conversation. It is not so difficult, and we assure you that everyone has that ability. You each have guides and teachers that are waiting, some of them desperately, <laughs> to have you touch in and, and see what is happening, to have you ask a question, to have you acknowledge them. Otherwise, they just kind of float around in the ethers and say, I wonder when, and nothing ever happens. Sometimes they will whisper in your ear, when they get you at, we would say at, at times of weakness, like when you're going to sleep or when you're waking up, they kind of put these little uh, jewels in your awareness. So if you don't ask, they suggest certain things to you. So if, if you're in that state where you only get that information in either waking or sleeping, Notice that it has a tendency to kind of evaporate. It's like a dream when you wake up. The first thing you know, that brilliant idea or that 
grand awareness that you had just kind of vaporizes and you're, spent, you're spending the rest of the day trying to think what it was about. So if you're in that position, take a little notepad or something and, and write yourself one or two things that help describe that and you'll find it doesn't evaporate quite so quickly. And when you do that, then you have the chance to go back and contemplate it or ask again and you'll find it comes through very clearly. Now, having said that, we also have to tell you that when you're in this altered state, I think it's a theta state or something like that that you call it, you're very much open. The things that you think, the things that you allow in are very prudent and apply directly to what you're doing, what your path is, what you're here to learn, and especially in your next moment and your next moment. So what we want to do is today is, if we can impress you to, to tune into that, then we'll throw a little something else at you. What we're using as a topic today is this thing about co-creation. Now, if you look in your dictionary, we would assume <laughs> that they will say something to the fact that if you're a co-creator, then you have a partner, perhaps a spouse, someone else that you're co-creating. If you're here in the physical co-creating, then you're probably trying to create a lifetime, maybe a family, something of this nature. But co-creation that we're speaking of is somewhat different. Now, co-creation can best be described possibly as a connection with God. But if, if you notice, this God connection, the idea of God is so vast and so all-encompassing that it's kind of hard to get a grip on that. It's kind of like the word love. I mean, you can have brotherly love, sisterly love, family love, love of God, love of life, love of enjoying your, yourself. God is kind of like that. It's all in, encompassing. So rather than saying that your co-creator is God. What we would like to propose to you is that your co-creator is the creative universe. Now, the first thing you're going to think is, well, how do you get in touch with the creative universe? I mean, nobody ever talks about that, do they? But this creative universe is something that you have with you that you cannot escape from. It's part of your gifts as being human. It's part of your awareness, part of your consciousness. So everything that you think, this co-creator, this creative universe, is what you are affecting. Your thoughts, your thinking, your beliefs, your reality, indeed your whole world is all tied up in this. Every time you have a thought, you're creating an energy those thought energies go out and create and they keep going and keep going until you call them back or destroy them. Now, the strange thing is, this is not something that you have to practice to do. You do it all the time. Every moment that you are aware or conscious, if you're thinking, you're creating. The thing is, are you creating the things that you want? the things that you would desire, the things that make you happy in life? Or are you simply kind of being washed around this way and that way? Now, most of humanity hasn't decided what they want. They don't have a positive attitude or a positive idea of what they would like. So what happens is they think, well, this is a, a neat experience. And then they go along the ways and they think, well, maybe this is not so neat. After all, I've spent all my money, got mugged, <laughs> or whatever else, or this love affair is kind of going sideways, you see? And where does it happen? It's up here. Things happen with your thoughts and your thinking long before they manifest into this physical world. So whatever you are thinking, there's a bit of a time delay for most of you. But the biggest time delay is the fact that you don't hold your focus. So when you're thinking, well, I'd like to do this, and the next moment you're saying, well, I'm not so sure I'd like to do that. After all, this change is something different. It's something I'm not used to. So those vacillating thoughts create what? 
thoughts are what you manifest. So whatever you're thinking, or thinking that you shouldn't be thinking, <laughs> it's manifesting in the world around you. It becomes your world, your reality, your creation. So you are co-creators. How are you creating? See, this co-creator that we're speaking of, this creative universe, is right beside you. It's with you all the time. You cannot escape it. It's part of your birthright. When you came in, you came in with this baggage, if you wish to call it that, or, or your gift. You get to choose which. But if you know how to use it, you'll find that this is quite a gift. And very few people recognize that. We'll give you, for instance, as an example, say you're here and you want to change the world, make it a better place. It's kind of like a beauty pageant when the beautiful young ladies get up and say, I want to change the world. Then they tell you how they're going to change it and this type of thing with one difference. When you decide you want to make the world a more beautiful place, and you decide this is wrong with the world, this is wrong with the world, this needs to be changed, that person needs to be eliminated or whatever else. You're not changing the world. What you're doing is reinforcing that there's something wrong with the world and you're headed for a clash. You get to be uh, a terrorist in a sense perhaps. At the very least, you can either tune out or you can grab your banner and stand on the street corner and wave it and vote for someone else. But that doesn't change things because that energy is still there and the more that you confront something that you want to change, the more that that energy that's, we want to say, an existing status quo begins to accelerate. It is a form of protection, we would say to you. Exactly like you, you're trying to protect yourself and you think you have to change this one and that one has to change you so that the turmoil escalates. So not only have you not created the thing that you had desired, but you've done just the opposite. You have made a mountain out of a molehill, or perhaps a volcano. So notice what happens when you decide to change things because something is wrong. It never works. There's been wars and battles for centuries and centuries. That one society has decided it needs to be changed. And the way to change it is to attack them. It is somewhat like your government being the policeman of the world. Every time there's a conflict, then you have to ship some young men and women over to try to solve that, to try to correct them, try to make it right, try to make it your ideal. So you're in conflict. And for the most part, you have the, the toys, the tools to pretty much do what you want. But you cannot change another human's mind. So when you go in and attack some third world country or any country, there are going to be those that are going to disagree with you. And you are attacking their homeland, their ideals, and they're not about to give up. Everyone doesn't think the same as you. Everyone is not an American. Even if you would like it to be that way, it will never happen. So how do you manifest the world that you want? And this is the magic, if you will, to creating. It has something to do with probably some advice that you will recognize with doing prayers. It's not a prayer per se, but if you wish to make the world a better place, See it as perfect as it is, not needing to change. Bless it, see perfection there. Now the first thing we'll say, well that doesn't change anything. <laughs> but it changes the most important person's thoughts, yours. If you can see it perfect already, not needing to change, and you can bless it, then you have changed it. 
And then you begin to be the domino that starts the whole evolution process. Simply by saying, isn't that perfect? So do your world need to change? Or is it perfect as it is? There seems to be a bit of a paradox there. Now, we'll give you another one. Let's say you have a relationship and everything is going great and you're on cloud nine and the sun is always shining and you're floating on air. So all of a sudden the other one doesn't do something that you would approve of. So all of a sudden the thoughts begin, and this one did this wrong and this one did that wrong. And the first thing you know, that person has all sorts of faults that you didn't see before. Stays up too late, smokes too many cigarettes, drinks too much coffee, talks like a sailor. <laughs> See, all kinds of possibilities. But the strange thing is, it wasn't there before. Now all of a sudden you think this person has changed. But that person has not changed. You are the one that has decided there's something defective there. And if it's defective, it has to be fixed. You have to be in control. So the first thing you do is start complaining to this person, say you're doing this and doing this and you gotta stop it or this is gonna drive me mad or I'm gonna do whatever. And guess what happens when you do that? It begins to escalate because all of a sudden she's seeing faults in you or he's seeing faults in you that you didn't recognize before. And all of those things become very apparent. <clears throat> now, I think that's called marriage. Is it not? <laughs> <clears throat> so how do you create a perfect relationship? It's not so difficult. See, that person is perfect. See, the relationship is you would wish it to be. Once you have that <clears throat> conviction or that awareness, that's what it becomes. You only see <clears throat> that person you fell in love with. You only are aware of the perfection in that. And that person can do anything. It could be a mass murder or whatever else. And that's not the part you see. You only see what you want to see. But it is your thoughts, it is your creation, and you are creating with this creative universe that is very much yours, no one else's. So this becomes your world, your truth, your reality, and it plays out. And as long as you see that, that is your world. But the moment that you begin to see imperfections, the honeymoon's over. And when you begin to say, this person has this little flaw, <clears throat> then the first thing you know, you're writing a list. <laughs> Twice. Saying, this is all the things that are wrong. And the person hasn't changed. Only your perception, only your creative universe is complying exactly with you and your thoughts. One way is perfect, the other way is conflict. Which would you rather have? That is the magic of creation. Now it is most interesting because we're talking <clears throat> about your co-creator as being a creative universe. So how do you tie that back in with this being God? You're God. It's not everything God and never none thing God also. So everything is this, we wouldn't say, all encompassing awareness or consciousness that we call God, this oneness. So you have a choice of how you would like to feel. How would you like to be happy? <laughs> uh, I mean, Floating happy, outrageously happy, with the sun shining every day, smiling. People think you're on something. <laughs> well, you see, you can do that too. You want to be happy? 
You don't find reasons why you can't be happy. You simply decide, I want to be happy. So you try peace and calmness, compassion, love, understanding, all those, and you reach this point of saying, hey, the world is kind of a nice place to be. And you think, well, why can't I be happy? And we have to tell you, if you're not happy, it is your creation because you think there's something wrong. And yet you are this perfect being. You have this perfect vehicle and this perfect creative universe that agrees to do and be whatever you wish it to be. Now, how unique are you? You see, you're in this time and space that we call 2012, for lack of a better word. We simply are aware this time of evolvement. And you have a choice. You can do it the old way, which is wars and battles and disagreements. Or you can see it as perfect already. Imagine the world, John Lennon, where there's no battles. Battles are attempt to change someone or something. And for what purpose? It never works. You've had society after society that has decided they have to be in charge, they have to be in control of their world. And everyone has to agree to that. Otherwise, it's put up and let's get with it. And you've had some that have conquered the world. They said this about Alexander too. <laughs> but it never works, it's not lasting. Because as soon as you show a sign of weakness, you'll have somebody else there that decides, hey, it's my turn. I finally get a chance to correct the world in my vision. We have to tell you, you are not all from the same place. Now, if you think you're Earthling, <laughs> you're latecomers. You've had other experiences, other worlds, other dimensions that you have existed in. And you come from different awarenesses, different experiences. So here you are in this food basket, fruit basket, <laughs> nut basket, whatever you wish to call it. And you're all mixing up. So you have this thing that's called mass consciousness that you're dealing with. So you see, all of a sudden, when you are aware that you're a co-creator and you have got the simple magic touch to make the world as you wish and you begin to create the world that you wish and you see it as whole and perfect then you have the mass consciousness we have to tell you look at your world it is mass consciousness it is what the majority if not all believe the world is how do you believe it is are you irritated and frustrated because of your gasoline prices? Pet peeve, yes. How about because you work too hard and underpaid? How about because your youth is slipping away? The mirror keeps lying to you every time you look and say, that's not the person I am. Why? Notice the thoughts. The challenge is to hold your focus on whatever you wish. If you wish to be young forever, then see yourself as that. You can have wrinkles and still be young. I can call young at heart. You can be happy. And still the world doesn't have to agree that this is a happy place to be. But a strange thing happens once you have set your idea, your idea of perfection, and that's all you see. All this other stuff simply passes you by. You're not pulled into it. You do not see the wars and battles. You're not experiencing that. You see your own private world being exactly as you wish. So you can have love, you can have abundance, you can have happiness, you can have calmness, you can have peace, you can have religion, if you like. See, all of those things are creative thoughts that you have and you put into action. And the strange thing is, it doesn't take a lot of effort. 
just this little thought, even just a little seed thought that you have thought and it begins to become a reality. And all you have to do is hold your focus on the perfection of that. See it whole and complete, exactly like you wish. So what would you like your world to be like? <laughs> now, there's a trick here. This is a trick question. You do not see your world as you want it to be. It's not going to start tomorrow. It starts right now, in the present. So when you have a thought, say, this is what I see as my perfect idea of life, love, happiness, relationships, abundance. You set that thought in motion and you decide to be that in that moment. And that moment carries into the future. Now, most beings here upon this earth plane operate on memory the things that you have experienced before in this lifetime and other lifetimes. And you're here trying to sort it all out, trying to get some idea of how to deal with that. And nobody ever tells you. See, it is perfect already. And you will have your analysts that will say, well, if you've had a bad childhood, let me take you back to that childhood and we'll deal with that. And you'll have this experience and, and you will see, well, there's no reason to be that way. But the strange thing is they bring you to the same point. You have to decide that you're perfect and you're whole and the whole situation was for your growth and for your evolvement. So they bring you to the same point, but you're a little bit lighter in the pocketbook in the process, you see. So notice the gift that you have this creative universe that you carry with you all the time, that you cannot get away from. And it is you. Memories are of the past. This creative universe is now and into the future. And you're the one that's in charge, not in control. If you wish to be in control, that's the wrong game. Because this is a gift. And it has to do with your thoughts. The best you can do is be the director of those. And they begin to manifest as you wish. If you think you have to be in control, there's always going to be some little glitch that's going to put you into a tailspin. And then you're going to think, well, this doesn't work. You're going to say, there's something wrong with me, perhaps. I'm not such a good creator after all. All because you have to be in control. But what if you could wake up every day with the expectation of a new gift, a new awareness, a new experience that you're absolutely going to love. And all you have to do is say, boy, I can hardly wait. It's like Christmas Eve. And then you go to bed and the magic happens. Santa Claus gets stuck in the chimney and whatever else, but it's, it's your creation. Now, if you were a child, most of you have been, at Christmas time, there most likely was a time when you believed in Santa Claus. And then somewhere you lost that awareness. Perhaps you were kitted out of that saying by the older children or something saying that, boy, you're a dummy if you believe in that. But Santa Claus is an energy, like God is an energy. Why can't it be Christmas every day? Why can't you wake up in a new world and say, well, I can hardly wait. This is going to be delightful. All by your thoughts. Now, <clears throat> you're human beings, yes? You are one of those few species that has the ability to be aware of itself to be aware that there's something beyond you, to be aware that you have this creative universe. It doesn't mean that animals do not have a creative universe, but they take it as being as is. Not only do they not 
have the ability to change it. They do not wish to. This is the way the world is. This is the species they are. This is what happens. But you, on the other hand, get to decide, is this what you wish? Is this the world you want? After all, you have somewhat contaminated the whole of the earth anyway, have you not? Look around, I mean, earthlings are all over the place and kind of pollute the environment, do they not? Global warming, oil spills. And you say, well, I didn't do any of that. <laughs> but you see, the world is perfect as it is. We have to tell you that this is a stage, a platform where everyone and anyone gets to play out their part. If you take that away from them, then you have a frustrated creator that will go to great lengths to create something even more devastating. So you have to see the world as in perfect evolution, not needing to change. Because the moment that you try to do away with all the murders and all the disagreements, that's a control issue because you think it has to be that way. You are the one that's in charge. Now, creators, you see, you're a complete package. The word co-creator is a little bit of a paradox, is it not? You are God, the creative universe is God, so you're all one and the same. You cannot think without affecting the physical world. Everything that is around you, everything that's created in this physicality that's been manifested is a thought being displayed before you. And if you're looking at it and you're analyzing it, it's your thought. Someone else may have attempted to blow up the world, but if you're observing it and judging it, it's your thought. You have a part in that. See it whole and see it complete. And you have arrived. Now, we recognize this perhaps sounds a little simplistic. Simplistic? We'll get that one out. But is it? You see, this really is an issue of mind direction. What you think, what manifests around you, and you have the ability to be an observer. Observe what's going on. It's the most fascinating thing, especially when you begin to see your own boo-boos. <laughs> the things that you have put out there that you've judged. When you begin to see them as incorrect, when you begin to judge things, guess what you are creating. See it as perfect and whole, then the whole world changes. It gets to be heaven on earth. It's a happy place. There's a song around a few years back, I believe called, Don't Weary, Be Happy. Good advice. It's much easier to say that than saying you have this creative universe that you're playing with. But then we have to do it the hard way, you see. Don't we? <laughs> so, <clears throat> with that little bit of information, and hopefully that you will at least think of that, begin to observe yourself, begin to notice how you think and why you think. And then, when you begin to play with that, you're going to find that there's something happened in a past life, perhaps, or even this lifetime, that influences that. So you're right back up to this point of choosing. Do you want to be a co-creator that is in charge of your now and your tomorrow? We are Alexander. <clears throat> we were going to have a little discussion on that, but I think we run out of time. So. Thank you all for your attention.